Okay. Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jessica. I am a first time working mommy. Um, my son's name is Nasser. He is one. He may make a cameo on this video at some point. So if he does, <laughs> exhibit A, I apologize. <laughs> But um, I do work in the airline industry, so naturally I and now my son have been in a lot of different airports and on a lot of different airplanes, excuse me. Um, so for this video, I just wanted to go ahead and share some tips and tricks that I use and I have used to make traveling with my son a lot easier and less stressful because it can be done um, each time it gets a little bit more easier. So if you are interested, go ahead and stay tuned. And if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe so you always get notified when i drop a new video the first section is going to be to plan this one is oh so important to make sure you set a little time aside to actually plan and pack and just put everything in order because the last thing you want is a day of traveling to be stressed out and worried about something you may have forgotten or something that's unexpected etc um so allow extra time to get to the airport and extra time in between your flights and that's Okay, sir, put this over here. And that's extremely important because when you're booking flights, you see that some connecting flights, especially, they don't allow a lot of extra time. Like I think some of them even allow 30 minutes or less. And that can be very stressful if you have a baby to be trying to get from gate to gate, um, especially if you gate check your stroller and car seat because that takes a little time for them to pull it up off the dress bridge. So try to either one, find a nonstop flight, which is usually what we do, or if you do have to connect, make sure that you allow yourself an extra amount of connection time. On average, I would say about an hour to be safe. The next thing would be to book your travel around your baby's sleep time or when they're the most sleepy. Um, and I say that because make it easier on yourself. If you know, like for me, for instance, Nasser takes his naps at 10, 11 a.m. Then he yeah. takes his second one around 4 p.m. Or of course, in the morning, he's asleep from six, for, from the nighttime to all the way up until about like seven, eight in the morning. So for me personally, I try to find flights that are either early, early in the morning, so like around 6 a.m., or I'll try to find a flight that's around 10, 11, in the midday when he's ready to go to sleep, or I'll try to find a flight in the middle of the day around four or five. Um, or of course, if you're doing a red eye flight that's 10 o'clock after whatever, that's great because your baby should be asleep. But try to work around it, make it easier for yourself, because if it's around their sleepy period, they'll naturally want to go to sleep anyway, so it'll make traveling that much more easier. So the next section is gonna be packing, which is super important because you wanna make sure that you have everything you need. The last thing you want is to get to your destination or get to the airport and realize that you forgot something. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is the diaper bag, which is super important. The diaper bag that we have is a book bag. This, I think, is great for traveling um, because you're going down the aisle in the airplane, I typically like to have Nasser, like I baby wear him onto the plane and then I have the backpack diaper bag on my back. So I'm not bumping into everyone when I'm going down the aisle with all my bags, etc. Um, so that's why I really love the diaper, the, excuse me, the backpack diaper style. But I did get this from Target. Um, if I do find the brand, I will link it in the description below. But I'm just going to go over everything that I have in each compartment that makes traveling a little bit more easier for us. Um, starting off with the side pockets, this is my sanitary pocket. I'm OCD about my child and germs and especially airplanes and airports because I know firsthand working on aircrafts um, that they're disgusting and they barely get cleaned. So just imagine your child who's trying to touch everything and stick everything in their mouth. Um, that's disgusting. So sanitary. So in this pocket, I do have lotion. This is mainly for myself, if my hands get dry. Um, I do have hand sanitizer. This is the Baby Organics brand. I love this one because it's alcohol free, so it's not as harsh. Um, and I can put it on Nasser's hands as well. He's gonna take that, okay. I also have some wet ones wipes. When I get on the aircraft, um, or even in the bathroom on the changing station, I like to wipe this down, or wipe them down, excuse me to make sure they're disinfected. And then I also have, bam, this bad boy, Lysol spray. When in doubt, spray it out. On the second side pouch, I just have his water cup. Now that Nasser is one, he does drink water throughout the day. Uh, before he was drinking water, I would just have an empty bottle or a 
um, excuse me, an empty bottle in this side pocket. So in this front pouch, this is for um, his food and medicine. I do have food and medication for him. I typically keep his EpiPen. They're usually not in the box. I just put that in there. But um, I typically keep one EpiPen in there. Um, I have his medicines like Benadryl, Tylenol. I recommend you always travel with Tylenol with your baby, even if they're not sick, obviously, because you don't anticipate your child getting sick or teeth cutting or what have you. So I always keep Tylenol or ibuprofen with me when I travel, one or the other. Benadryl, um, in case I do have allergic reaction to something. Um, these are amazing. As far as baby food is concerned, I don't travel with actual baby food jars. Again, if your baby's a little younger, then that's what you have to do. But I do recommend that you try to go with a glass jar opposed to the plastic because they're one slimmer and they can fit in those little bottle pockets a lot better. And they're, re excuse me, reseal, resealable, okay? The plastic ones, like Gerber, typically they don't come with a plastic top. It's just like the peel away and then once you open it, you're done. So I would recommend jars if you are traveling. But if your baby's a little older or um, they have more control, I definitely recommend the pouches. I either go with the Gerber Organics or the Beach Hunt Organics. Those are my faves. But I keep a couple of these and I'll also put a couple in his suitcase um, for the trip. I always keep some kind of utensil. So that when we go out to eat, he can um, use his own utensils. I keep a friendly, um, not friendly, a finger friendly or like the little puffs or cookies, something in there for him just to easily and feed himself to keep him occupado. And I also always keep a food bib in there. In this upper pouch up here, I call this my mommy pouch because I keep everything personal for myself up here. Somehow his toy got stuck in there. Donald Duck. This is usually for me. but um, So things that I keep up here, one, I try to keep our boarding pass and my passport here because it's for easy access. But other than that, I keep some travel deodorant because traveling with the baby, moving and doing all that, I sweat. I don't know about you, but I do. Clearly, I still have my passport in here for my last travels. I keep some more hand lotion. You never know. Your girl don't like to be ashy. I keep some Q-tips, um, tampons, pads, and then also, I don't really need these anymore, but when I first started breastfeeding, these were super important. They are the, um, what am I thinking of? To keep milk from leaking through your bra. I always kept a couple of these in there as well. All right, so that's all for the outside. Let's go ahead and dive deep into the diaper bag. So I'm just gonna go over some basics that I always keep in here. Sometimes it changes, obviously, because I do alternate the clothes in here. But for the most part, I always keep a jacket in his diaper bag, um, just in case we get somewhere or the airport's extremely cold or the aircraft are out. I always keep a onesie, a backup onesie in his bag because I have had blowouts happen in the airport. Then I also keep like a nice outfit in there. Then I also keep a muslin blanket. I don't use it for what it's supposed to be used for to swaddle. I actually use this for nursing. I will actually tie it and leave this space right here so I can look in it. And I will drape this over myself. Um, while I'm nursing Nasser in the airport or on the plane, what have you. And it also doubles as a blanket if he's cold or if I'm cold. So it has multiple purposes in one item. So I love it and it takes up very little space. Some other things that I always keep in his bag is a, re um, not a receiving, excuse me, a burp blanket. He doesn't really need it for that purpose now, but anytime he makes a mess or maybe I need to wipe his mouth, I use this. Obviously, you're changing that. Diapers, wipes. Um, this cute little wipe. This is by Huggies, actually. It's a traveling wipe. So you don't have to bring the, um, the huge thing of wipes. I usually put the huge thing of wipes in my uh, suitcase. And then I put this in the diaper bag. It's refillable. And it like has a Ziploc seal. So you can refill it as much as you want, as many times as you want. And it has a cute little clutch, wristlet thing, whatever. Um, and then I also keep 
one or two of these because if I am on the airplane for whatever reason, God forbid I have to change his diaper on the airplane, I can go ahead and put the diaper in. Um, and then I also keep Aquaphor in here. I will also, big tip, keep a toy that your child has never seen before or sometimes if you're able to, go out and just buy a new toy. It doesn't have to be anything big, something small. Small like this group. Nasser is obsessed with this group. And I typically keep it in his bag so that he doesn't see it unless it's for special occasions like traveling because he gets so excited um, that he hasn't seen it in a while and it'll keep him occupied for a long period of time. So just something new and shiny or something loud that makes noise or like those little books that are like crunchy, things like that that'll keep them occupied. Also, I will keep this essential, excuse me, um, a thermometer, a brush, um, some of the little travel shampoo baby wash and then i'll also keep a travel um baby lotion somewhere in this bag and then also some diaper rash cream in the event that he does get diaper rash so the next thing i want to talk about as far as packing is concerned um your stroller and car seat set so i do use a travel system it is by graco i believe it's the 360 click or 350 360 or 36 35 i don't know um, I can link it below though in the description box, but it is by Graco. Um, I love it. It's the infant car seat, obviously, um, and stroller. And it is a jogging stroller. So it does have three wheels, two in the back, one in the front. These are especially awesome for traveling because they click together um, and it takes up less space and you having to have a whole car seat and then a whole stroller. Um, please keep in mind that you can take the car seat and the stroller all the way up to the gate and you can gate check them. And what gate checking is basically when um, you go to the gate, you tell them that you have a stroller and a car seat, they will give you a special ticket. And when you go down the jet bridge to get on the plane, you leave it on the jet bridge. And when you get off the aircraft, no matter if you're connecting or not, every time you get off that aircraft, they will bring it up to you on the jet bridge. And then you can use it obviously throughout the airport or if you're leaving the airport to go get your luggage and leave. Um, I love that per se because me personally, I travel by myself a lot with Nasser. I've only traveled once with my fiance and Nasser. And when I have to go to the bathroom or my arms are just tired or I just need a break in general, um, I have somewhere to put my baby down in that car seat or in the stroller. It makes for an extra space to put my child down. And then also if I'm carrying stuff, I have extra storage underneath that stroller um, to put things maybe i'm tired of carrying the book bag or maybe a blanket that i had with me whatever i could put it down in there so it's extra storage if your um airline that you are traveling with on that particular flight has an extra seat available you can always ask the gate agent obviously and just say hey do you have an extra seat that's open and if they do you can actually take your car seat as long as it is faa approved um you'll know because it will have a sticker on the bottom of the car seat you can actually take that car seat onto the aircraft. I don't so much do it anymore. I used to when Nasa was an itty bitty baby because again, if I'm on the aircraft and I'm tired and I'm tired of holding my baby, I have somewhere to put him or her to sleep. Um, but that is an option and it is free. They will not charge you for this, um, but you just ask your gate agent for that. Next thing as far as packing is concerned is baby wearing. I strongly suggest that you baby wear your child um, when you go through TSA and when you get on the aircraft because it does free up your hands to do other things. Um, you can use a baby carrier or you can sling your child. Um, I have a preference for the age that he's at now. When he was younger, I had a different preference. So I will start with the one that we used to use. And that is a sling. This particular sling is by, it's a ring sling, excuse me. And this particular ring sling is by the company Wild Bird. They are a little pricey, but you can find slings, ring slings for a lot cheaper, obviously. This is their rainbow Lorkey. I will put it in the description below again. Um, but this is just, oof. it's been so long since I've used this. But basically you just sling it up and you put your baby in there. I love this um, baby wearing option specifically when he was a lot smaller um he didn't move around as much because it kept him super close to me um and it's also very soft um when he was younger his skin was a little more rough and a little more sensitive and i didn't want a lot of materials rubbing against him so i really like this option when he was younger 
Another great option is the Baby Catan. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong per usual. I will leave um, the name of the baby wear and the company in the description below. Um, but this is another option for you. And then you put your baby. It's similar to the ring sling for me. It's easier than the ring sling, but it has the same concept um, of it being fabric and keeping your baby close to you. But you just put your baby in there. Again, I love this option when Nasa was a lot smaller. And I actually like using this baby carrier around the house more um, that I did like traveling with it. But it's an option. The one that I use now, the one that I love, and that is an actual baby carrier. And this particular brand is Inventino. <clears throat> I will leave the brand, the company, and the type in the description below. As you can see, all these click, click, clicks keep him in check. Okay. I love <laughs> this option for traveling because it's sturdy um, and it's reliable for me. Next section I'm going to talk about is your outfit for the day of travel. I definitely would suggest you wearing something functional and comfortable for when you do travel, whether it's with or without your baby, honestly. But especially when you have your baby. My go-to traveling outfit with Nasser has to be, of course, leggings. Okay, they're simple, easy, they're soft, comfortable material. Um, also a v-neck or a nursing friendly. Um, this is again particularly for me, unless you do breastfeed. Unless you if you do breastfeed, excuse me. Um, I do breastfeed, so it's really important for me to have easy access shirts so that I can breastfeed on demand and not be fumbling with a bunch like this for in particular would not be a, something I would wear to the airport because there would be no way for me to nurse him without pulling my shirt over my head. Um, so like a v-neck, like I said, or a nurse friendly shirt, as well as an oversized cardigan. And that's important because one, you wanna be warm and then two, you can use that oversized cardigan to cover up your baby if you are feeding. Again, if you're nursing. Um, so how I would do it is I would put my leggings on, obviously, I would put on my shirt um, and then a nursing bra, excuse me. Make sure you have that if you are breastfeeding. I will put on my nursing bra, obviously, my shirt. Then I will put the baby carrier on. And then I will put my cardigan over the baby carrier. So I will actually leave the house with the baby carrier on. So it's the last thing I have to worry about getting that all together when I get in the airport. It's already done for me. Um, um, and the next big thing is shoes. Air slip-on shoes. If you're traveling with a child, it's. I'm telling you, it's a lifesaver because if you're going through TSA and your baby wearing your baby, or if you have your baby in general, you don't want to have to be worrying about bending down and taking all those laces out and taking your shoes off and putting them in the, it's just, it's a lot. I always make sure that I have on some kind of slip on shoes. My go-to is moccasins, moccasins, however you want to say it. Okay. Those are my go-to. And then as far as Nasser goes, I always make sure he's in something comfortable like a zip up onesie. Um, because one, that's easy for me to change his clothes if he does have a blowout or to change his diaper, it's just zip down, pull his legs out, change his diaper, zip back up. Um, or something that's soft and comfortable, like sweatpants and a shirt and a jacket, whatever. Something simple and comfortable for him. All right, so the next big section is going to be TSA. Um, as far as TSA is concerned, some major points would be one, you do not need a birth certificate when you are traveling with your baby if you are traveling domestic. Yeah. If you're traveling international, then you will need to show a passport for your child when you do go through TSA. You need to only make sure that your baby is listed on your ticket as a lap child, or if you bought your baby its own or his or her own seat, then of course you will have his or her own boarding pass. Excuse me. But you just need to make sorry. Um, you just need to make sure that your baby is listed on the boarding pass. You can do so by when you purchase your ticket, some airlines will allow you to go ahead and list your baby as a lap child. Um, the two airlines that I've dealt with that have you listed when you purchase would be um, Delta and United. They actually have an option for you to go ahead and tag your kid on that ticket. If the airline does not, some of which like Southwest and American, you will have to do it when you get to the airport at the ticket gate or not ticket gate. I apologize, at the list them at the ticket eight, excuse me, the ticket counter prior to going through TSA. If you do have to list your child at the ticket counter prior to going through TSA, you will have to show some proof that that is your child and proof of their age. Because if you are traveling with the lap child, they have to be under two for it to be free. 
Um, but you do not, again, still need to bring that birth certificate to the airport if it is a domestic flight. You only need to take a screenshot or uh, a picture of that birth certificate and show it to the ticket agent. Um, and they will go ahead and add the child to your to your um, boarding pass. If you are traveling with breast milk through TSA, there is not a limit per se on how much you can take through. I would just recommend that if you are traveling with larger quantities of milk, that you do. Really? That's what we're doing right now? All right, so if you are traveling with breast milk in large quantities, I just recommend that you go ahead and make sure that the milk is frozen rock solid through. It will make your processing time a lot more simpler. Um, excuse me, the time a lot. You won't take as much time as the ESA, basically, because they will try to test all of your milk. Please keep in mind that you can tell them not to open the milk and take samples of it you can tell them don't do that they will just test the outside of the bag i would just say make sure you know your rights make sure you do go to tsa.gov and you do update yourself prior to traveling on the current up-to-date tsa guidelines um and i even took it as far as screenshotting them as far as breast milk and formula to make sure that when i did go through tsa if any of the agents gave me a hard time i would just bam no you're not okay because some of them don't know what they're doing i'm sorry to say it but I don't know what the hiring criteria is for TSA, but I promise you I've dealt with one, if not multiple, that just wasn't all the way there. Um, if you are traveling with formula, that is fine. You can go ahead and take pre-made bottles through TSA, or you can take bottles that are pre-filled with water through TSA, that is fine. They will just, again, test the outside of the bottle. You just cannot go through with a huge jug of nursery water, no ma'am, you cannot do that. I am sorry to inform you. Also, as far as formula fed babies go, I would recommend you get the, they have like a pre-measured, it's like a little jar per se, and it has pre-measured sections of formula for each bottle. Those will really come in handy. I've never personally used them, but I've seen them and traveling with babies that I've seen with them, it looks super simple because you don't have to worry about scooping it out and make sure it level, like you cut, you know what I mean? Like you just pour it into the bottle, it's pre-measured, you shake it up, you're good to go. I would definitely recommend you getting that um, when you do travel. As far as baby food is concerned, you can take as much as you would like. Again, there is no pre-measured amount that you have to or cannot take through TSA. I would just recommend that you keep it all in one place. That goes for all your liquids and including your wipes. You keep it all in one area and you know exactly where it's at. So when you do go through TSA, you just pull it all out, put it in the bin and keep it moving. They can easily see with clear eyes. They don't have to take time searching through your bag, looking for said liquids um, or wipes or gels, whatever. Just make sure you keep it in one spot um, to make your life a little bit easier. You will also have to go ahead and push the um, Car seat will have to go through the scanner like your luggage does. And then the car, not car seat, excuse me, the stroller. My stroller in particular, the jogging stroller with the three wheels will not fit through the scanner. So they do have to manually check that one themselves. But if you do have a smaller car seat or a normal size car seat, or I keep saying it's car seat, I'm so sorry. If you have a normal size stroller, that will go through the scanner as well, like the car seat, like your luggage. So keep that in mind. Um, and then also, as I've already stated, to baby wear your baby through TSA it will make it easier and you can leave your baby in the baby carrier when you walk through the scanner um, and they will just scan you down. Um, but it makes it easier so your hands are free when you're putting everything on that um, conveyor belt to go through the scanner. So that is all for TSA. The next is just going to be tips and tricks that I will provide you with from one mommy to another or one mommy to a daddy, what have you. Um, so my number one tip would be to, again, allow extra time to get to the airport, extra time to get everything situated and get through TSA. You never know what may happen. And also because babies will throw a wrench into your plans every single time. So I would just make sure you allow yourself extra time. My next tip would definitely be to use the bathroom and change your baby's diaper prior to boarding. 
Um, I don't know about you, but I am super claustrophobic as far as airplane bathrooms are concerned. Um, some of them do have changing tables, but it's not very big in there, so it's not a lot of room to really maneuver. So I definitely recommend you changing your baby's diaper prior to getting on the aircraft and applying aquifer or Vaseline to your baby um, when you change the diaper prior to boarding because you never know um, what's going to happen on the aircraft. I mean, you may very well get on a plane and then there's turbulence the entire flight and they do not allow you to get up and your baby has, I don't know, a blowout or they have a wet diaper and you don't have time or you cannot change them. Um, for that entire duration of the flight. Applying the aquifer and the Vaseline to their butt will prevent them from getting a diaper rash um, because it will provide a layer um, between their butt and whatever in the diaper. Um, so that is a super huge tip for you. And then last but not least, just relax, okay? It will be fine. Don't worry about everyone else around you. Do not worry about what people will think about you. Just focus on you and your baby and that wonderful trip you're about to take together. I hope this was helpful for you. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into my channel and this video. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe so you always get notified when I do drop another video. Thank you so much, bye.